Now I like to give the floor to Andre to briefly introduce the TOF and the TIP. Andre. Thank you, you. Welcome everybody. My name is Andre Olszewski from SCAT Foundation and we are based in Switzerland. May I get the slide please? Yes. Hold on, Andre. I've got a message here that the poll must be closed until I okay. can show your screen again. Your first slides. Thank you. Yeah, as you mentioned, we have developed two tools in the Bosch Tech project, uh, the Technology Applicability Framework, the TAF, and the Technology Introduction Process, the TIP. In the next five to seven minutes, I will try to give you a short overview on the underlying concepts of the TAF and the TIP. In brief, the TAF is an assessment tool and a decision support tool on applicability and scalability of WASH technologies. And the TIP is a guidance and management tool for the introduction of technologies. And as indicated in the slide, the TAF and TIP are complementary tools to support effectively the uptake of WASH technologies. The next slide, please. Target users of the TAF and the TIP are particularly government at local and national level, the local private sector, local NGOs, but also international NGOs that implement projects or development partners that invest in technologies or projects, academia, and others like microfinance institutions. The TAF is an easy to use tool. It follows a stepwise and participatory process approach. It includes desk work, but also field visits and a workshop involving all relevant actors, which means the government, the producers or suppliers, and also the users. Next slide, please. The process of a TAF application follows four steps. It starts with a screening of the technology. The purpose of the screening is to filter out those technologies that are not applicable in a specific context or where there is no demand and need. Because the TAF will assess a te one technology in one given context. This is the setup where we use the TAF. If a technology passes the screening, uh, we go for a more comprehensive assessment and look at the potential of that technology in a given context. Based on this, we present the results in the third step of the screening and the assessment and finally we'll do the interpretation and conclusion. Next slide. The comprehensive assessment as mentioned, as second step is based on a set of 18 indicators. These 18 indicators consider six sustainability dimensions, which include the social dimension, economic, environmental dimension, organizational, institutional, legal, the skills and know-how dimension, and finally, as a sixth one, the technology itself. And these six, six dimensions are reflected by three particular perspectives which are relevant for the introduction and uptake of a technology. And these are the user and buyer of the technology, the producer and provider, and as a third perspective, the regulator, the investor and facilitator of the process, of the uptake process. And if you merge these six dimensions and three perspectives, you end up having 18 indicators. For each of these 18 indicators, there are prepared generic questionnaires and you apply these questionnaires in the field but also in a workshop. And finally, in the scoring workshop, which involves government, private sector, the users but also other actors, uh, you go through the questions and finally you agree on one score for each of the indicator using a traffic light system which is indicated on the right hand side. So we have a green if there is a high value for this indicator, a positive 
supportive response, a red one where it's the contrary, where it's critical or negative. We use yellow if the impact is not known and there's a, definitely a follow-up needed. And if there's just too little information to score, we need a question mark. So you go through all the dimensions one by one and you present the score in a profile as indicated on the left hand side. So this is one of the results of the TAF and this profile allows you various entry points for interpretation whether you focus on a particular perspective or a, on a dimension or on a specific topic and it also offers a basis for comparing different technologies uh, or different type of technologies for the same context. Next slide please. Now I come to the second tool, the Technology Introduction Process Guide, the TIP. The TIP is more a guidance tool for supporting actors to plan, manage and monitor a WASH technology validation and introduction. In its form it's developed as a generic tool which needs to be adapted to country specific needs and procedures. So it's flexible and can be adapted to different contexts, technologies and also cost models. Next slide. In the tip we, we look at the uptake of technologies from a product and marketing point of view. In this graph, the uptake of a technology is presented uh, over time from a particular, for, for different particular aspects like costs or impacts. And what you can see is that uh, a, a successful uptake will take a long time. So usually we see a slow uptake in the beginning which is the red curve and, and later the uptake is accelerated. This leads to the situation where you face a lot of investments uh, in the beginning which is the brown curve and unfortunately little revenues and this gap creates the value of death, a funding gap which needs to be uh, filled somehow. And in order to pass this value of depth and to move up to the a higher level of uptake, various actors will be involved in this process like the users or the producers, invest and regulator and they all have to take on specific roles and accomplish tasks in different phases to make this process a success. And of course this needs proper coordination. So the issue around clear roles, right timing and coordination, these are the challenges the TIP tries to solve and provide solutions. Based on uh, analysis of many case studies of technology introduction processes, the, in the tip we use and we describe the uptake process the three key phases which we call the invention phase, the tipping point and the uptake and use phase. So the invention phase is the initial phase where, where there is the piloting of a prototype where you, you test the, the prototype in the field where you have the feasibilities studies and if a technology passes the testing you prepare the launching. The launching means um, you, you set up um, the production, the supply chain, you train the users, you increase uh, intensity of promotion and after this hopefully more and more units will be taken up which is then the tipping point phase and if, if you, many units are there and you can say the market is saturated, you will have a successful uptake. So the tip provides for each of these phases and for all actors involved a um, specific uh, a description of the tasks which are specific for the actors in each of these phases. And as I mentioned, this is a, a generic guide. So you have to take this generic description and apply it to your, your setup and um, technology. What we have done and provided is um, the tip with 
as a generic tool, but also with examples on different cost models as the market-based approach, which you could use also for self-supply. So where does the TAF comes in here? So the TAF, from our point of view, definitely is for validation of technologies. So it will be in the very beginning of the testing phase. But you can also use the TAF as a monitoring tool to monitor the uptake and the performance of your technology. And in the result of the TAF, you have indication on how to design and improve the, the introduction process. Next slide, please. So this was, in a nutshell, a very brief introduction in the underlying concepts of the TAF and the TIP. I'm aware that this, this was a very fast introduction and for me, more details, please uh, contact the resource base www.watchtechnologies.net. There you find all documents as free download because all documents are published in the public domain. So now I want to close. Thank you very much and would like to hand over to my colleagues who present more in-depth case studies and applications of these tools. Thank you very much for your interest. Thanks, Andre, for this clear explanation and showing the power of TAF and TIP. Can I invite now Benedict to talk about the uptake and experiences of TAF in Ghana, to see the power of TAF there? Benedict? Yeah, thank you, you. Uh, I present the experiences with the implementation and the development of the TAF in Ghana. Uh, so first let's look at WatchTech in Ghana, which uh, I mean the project that led to the development of TAF. Next slide. The development of the whole process was uh, targeted at ensuring that only the, the tool TAF is really embedded in the sector and the sector adopts it as one of the key tools when you are talking about sustainable watch delivery using technology as the entry point. So we set up to work with core institutions and partners within the country, including the sector institutions and also private sector and other projects that were doing things that were similar to the work that we were doing. We also made use of sector platforms as a means of sharing our outputs and the processes that we engage in and also targeted some special groups that were going to be used as a main sector and ensuring uh, embedding of our activities. Uh, next slide. Let me talk a bit about how uh, we have made use of the generic tool within the sector. We use it on seven different technologies, both sanitation and water technologies, and we did this in different rounds, four rounds, uh, uh, to ensure that we learn lessons and get feedbacks to improve on the tool. We, the process involved uh, customizing the tool or the questions, training first staff, and also collecting data and data at the local level or district level and then also having a scoring workshop where we bring all the issues together and take decisions at the national level. This exercise could also be done at the district level. And based on these um, uh, results or discussions, uh, next slide, we also had the results or the feedback first of all to improve on the tool as we develop it sharpen the issue, the indicators and the questions that we are looking at. And also through the testing of the seven technologies, we have developed recommendation notes on each of the technologies. So for each of the piloting that we did, we got a profile, as you can see on the slide, showing where we had the issues as Andre has already explained. And then we have 
uh, come out with recommendations for improving on those technologies that we have piloted on. These technology notes are also available on the website which Andre shared with you earlier. Uh, next slide. We have received feedbacks from the sector based on the activities that we have done. And that led to improvement on the tool as it is now. First of all, initially there were issues with how the questions are captured and how they, uh, they bring out the meaning that they want to carry. And through the testing and all the activities, there has been improvement in the guiding questions and the scoring questions. And they have become uh, sharper and quite straightforward for uh, people who use it. The sector generally finds the tool as a very comprehensive tool if you look at the metrics of the six sustainability dimensions and the three uh, perspectives. And people are particularly enthused about the inclusion of the user perspective in discussing sustainability of what is using the technology as an entry point. So the final, they, they see the tool as bringing all the critical issues on sustainability to bear for discussion and for decision making. People are also very particular about the fact that the tool allows a participatory uh, approach or processes to take place so that we ensure sustainability a uh, true, transparent and a fair uh, process of assessment. Uh, we also recognize that given the transparent nature, the participatory nature, it requires some uh, skillful, unbiased uh, facilitation to ensure that the results that we get is fair and uh, reflect what the sector needs. And then also we see that within the sector something was being done previously, but really this has shown that uh, the results show that the TAF is long overdue, so people are very happy and they think that is an added value. In terms of how we are taking the whole tool forward, now we have managed to get uh, sector stakeholders to, to host, and particularly we have two different hosts for sanitation uh, technologies and also for water, that is Community Water and Sanitation Agency for Water, and Environmental Health and Sanitation Directorate also for sanitation. These are institutions that are mandated to look at the two uh, subsectors. Uh, and then there's effort to also legislate the, the TAF and also the TIP, which will be shared with you very soon by another colleague. We are in the process of having a handing over next week to the sector officially. And the sector will put this, the tool on their website so that developers and other stakeholders can refer to and be guided by the tool and also use it in their activities. Already the TAF is being implemented or applied on three technologies that have been introduced to the sector uh, for review and we are working on it. Yesterday we had a meeting uh, on one of them and then the various uh, stakeholders that have been involved are also committed to continuous uh, technical support to the sector so that we can really strengthen the capacity within the sector to use it. So in a nutshell, this has been uh, the progress so far with the application of the TAF within the Ghanaian sector. And a lot of information can be found on the website. Thank you very much. I hand over to you. Thanks, Benedict. Happy to hear that uh, the Ghanaian war sector shows so much buy-in in the top. Very promising. If the audio was sometimes poor during this presentation, sorry for that. That is because of the internet connections we have with Africa, since Benedict is in Ghana and Paul, the next presenter, will be in or is in Uganda. But please uh, keep connected. Um, this kind of small interruptions are the reality in working in a project and uh, communicating with Africa. i like to go to Uganda, as I said, to hear about the experiences with TIP and TOF there. Paul, may I invite you to tell us about that? Paul? Paul? 
Yes, good afternoon from Uganda. May I have a presentation? Yes, I'm going to share on the TIP, which is the technology introduction process. I work for the appropriate technology center for water and sanitation, which is a semi-autonomous research arm of the Ministry of Water and Environment in Uganda, and also the host for both the TAF and the TIP in Uganda. In Uganda, though, the TIP is known as the Guidelines to Wash Technology Introduction. At the center of its development are three of the project partners, which include Networks, Network for Water and Sanitation, which is Networks Uganda. We have Water Aid and the Appropriate Technology Center, as well as uh, IRC has been giving support. And the way it has been working is under a steering committee, which was formed under three organizations above where the secretariat for that steering committee. The steering committee also had representation from the Uganda Water and Sanitation NGO Network, an umbrella body for NGOs in the sector, from the Ministry of Health, a number of universities, from the Ministry of Water and Environment, which is the parent ministry guiding policy for water and sanitation. We had uh, district water officers, UNICEF, and representatives from the private sector as well. Next slide, please. The process began with an orientation meeting for the country partners with regard to TAF and CHIP. This was to bring everyone on board within those organizations and improve their awareness about the TAF and their recognition of the need for a technology introduction process that is guided as a project. Following that meeting, a workshop which was facilitated by SCAT Foundation which had developed a generic tip was held. This had representatives from various government and local government agencies, NGOs, the private sector, and research institutions. By the end of the workshop, these stakeholders had mapped out roles for the different actors in scenarios of technology introduction involving either water or sanitation technologies. The Secretariat, in consultation with the Ministry of Water and Environment, then developed terms of reference for the steering committee to guide the development of the TIP. The, the committee was nominated by the Permanent Secretary for the Ministry of Water and Environment and had 24 members from all across the sector, that is to say from government agencies, NGOs, the private sector and development partners. The steering committee met on four occasions to review the draft TIP documents and after they were satisfied with the results, a presentation was made to the committee ahead of another presentation to be made at the ministry. This presentation at the ministry will actually be held tomorrow morning, but in the meantime, discussions have been held with the Ministry of Water and Environment to embed the, the TIP into the DIM, the DIM, which is a district implementation manual, which is currently under review. The TIP will also be tested on a water treatment technology and disseminated at selected sector events in 2014. Next slide, please. In 
the technology introduction process shall be presented the technology introduction process this is a brief of how it will play out in Uganda initially a technology introduction working group will be formed to manage the process but also review existing technologies for their appropriateness and scalability a wash technology shall be submitted to a government agency which could be a local government or a government ministry but ultimately it should be brought to the attention of the Ministry of Water and Environment. The Ministry of Water and Environment would then sign an MOU with the producer or provider of the technology. This would then be passed on to the ATC, the Appropriate Technology Center, which shall assess the technology to see that it actually does serves its intended purpose but also that it can be used within the existing institutional framework and there is a need for such a technology. Lastly, the ATC shall examine where in the country such a technology would be applicable. The technology may be screened out or allowed to progress to piloting. Here champions for the technology will be identified and necessary adjustments from the feedback from the users are made during the piloting of the technology. After the piloting, the next stage would be the validation of the technology and here the TAF will be used to make the assessment. A scoring workshop will be here to determine the technology potential in a given context. The technology introduction working group will then hold a workshop that will review the TAF results and introduction plan. This is in the this is in the next slide. If there are serious problems affecting the scalability of the technology, efforts to promote the technology will stop. If successful, a validation certificate is awarded and the product is officially launched. In the meantime, a system of knowledge capture would be set up and lessons learned are shared across the sector. Monitoring and evaluation shall be ongoing throughout the whole introduction process. And again, the TAF will be used to provide real-time analysis of the technology performance in different contexts. The working group shall have a workshop for further promotion of the technology in which the technology introduction plan will be reviewed and the supply chain capacities examined and planned for. Finally, during the uptake operation and service phase, the technology should be adapted towards new needs of users and quality standards should be enforced. In a nutshell, that is the technology introduction process for Uganda. Next slide. Thank you for listening. Further information on the wash tech and the tip will be available on the websites shown in the next slide. Thank you very much. Thanks, Paul. Good to hear that the tip is well embedded in the wash sector at the national level in Uganda and that there is a leadership shown by the Ministry of Water and Environment. Also a promising development. Water Aid sees the power of tough and tip and introduced it in two countries that are non-project countries, so not Uganda, Ghana, or Burkina Faso. Vincent, please tell us more about that. Vinny? Hi, good afternoon, everyone, and good morning. Um, 
So yeah, as Jo said, I'm going to just briefly talk about the TAF's implementation beyond the um, project countries, which were Burkina Faso, Ghana, and Uganda. Um, during the final phase of the project, uh, WaterAid, together with some other partners and with support from SCAT, have uh, used the TAF in, in Tanzania and Nicaragua. Um, so I'll just talk briefly about why we why we decided to do that. Um, basically, through the project, um, it became clear that the TAF is extremely useful um, and quite easy to apply to assess blockages to sustainability and scalability. And there were two specific situations where we wanted to do that in those two other countries, Nicaragua and Tanzania. Starting with Nicaragua, um, a kind of poor flush latrine had been introduced um, in 2012 into some remote Atlantic coast communities um, that suffered um, the impacts of Hurricane Felix in 2007. Um, these are very remote communities and the idea um, that the government had and the National Wash Unit had was to scale up use of this poor flush latrine um, toilet possibly. Um, and water aid and uh, Welthunger Hive, the German NGO, wanted to understand the sustainability and scalability of this particular technology option in the in that environment. So um, they carried, they got the um, Ministry of Health uh, together with the National Wash Unit and the territorial indigenous uh, local government as well as the municipal local government for two municipalities together to to investigate barriers based on the two years of experience that they had of using this technology with the communities. Um, so what they found was that the TAF was really good to get everyone together really to discuss directly without NGO involvement other than it as a facilitator um, directly barriers and what needs to be done to unblock these um, to get the technology to perform better possibly to address some of the financing models um, and address different aspects of the service that are not performing so well um, that could be improved. So a good tool to bring communities together with government. Um, and then in Tanzania, a similar situation, the Water Aid Country Program uh, wanted to evaluate the performance of solar technology as a possible option um, for meeting more um, people with WASH services in the future, the government have and the sector have plans to dramatically increase the number of people served in Tanzania. Um, so that was carried out with support from SCAT. And um, what's interesting uh, about using the TAF on systems like solar, relatively complex systems, is it helps to unpack exactly where um, barriers to, to, to those systems lasting are. And there may not be a problem directly with the technology, but certainly there could be problems in the wider service that um, that technology is, 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 is expected to deliver. So, um, for example, in Tanzania, one of the main problems wasn't actually the solar system, but it was actually the conditions in the borehole that was being used um, in the scheme, which was holding it back. Um, but also in other solar investigations, for example, in Uganda, many other issues have been um, uncovered by the TAF. Um, so yeah, the, um, the, the tool we found is extremely useful for, for just use in a standalone situation. For example, the Nicaragua case um, didn't receive really any external support at all. The team there just took it and translated it into Spanish and used it. So all in all, we in WaterAid certainly as well as with the other partners in the consortium believe this to be an extremely useful tool and we hope to institutionalize use of it to carry out feasibility assessments um, for um, new services to be introduced to understand their costs, to understand what level of support will be available from um, local government, from utilities, service providers in the future, uh, just to unpack aspects of sustainability systematically. Um, and routine as part of a process. So we will use it in at least three countries, additional countries next year. Thanks very much. I'll hand back to Yo now.
Thanks, uh, Vincent. Great to hear that the scaling out to non-project countries is taking place and more countries are to come. So now we have heard uh, also interest in TAF and TIP expressed by several development partners. In our communications we got to know that and some of them have even concrete plans to apply these tools towards achieving more sustainable war services. So that's great news actually. Uh, at this moment in time I would like to introduce also that we have two more people here around the table actually three. It's uh, Carmen da Silva who is working hard on uh, getting all the questions uh, written down and we will in a few uh, seconds uh, have them answered. And we have Petra Brusset who is uh, working very nicely on the presentations and we have Biko who is helping us uh, with uh, the timing and the overall uh, support. Thanks all. Okay, um, on the questions, let's see what questions have come in and to get some of them answered. Uh, if there are more questions than we have time for, uh, we will put the answers to those questions on our websites. So don't worry um, that you will not get an answer if that is not coming here. Uh, I have uh, an interesting and important question in terms of the uh, the application of the TAF process and that is how long actually does the TAF process take um, to, to make it happen and I would like to ask Andre uh, to answer that. So how long does it take to have the TAF process done? Thank you for the question. So, for the Tanzania case, uh, we had one day preparation in the office, we had three days in the field, and we had one day for the wrap-up. This is uh, with support, of course. I don't know the case of Nicaragua, but within the testing, and we did this on 13 different technologies in three rounds, we uh, also monitored the costs for the application. So time is one thing, cost is another issue. And we came up with a, a consolidated cost figure of about 3,000 US dollars for one assessment in one region on one technology. Um, this is more or less a rough estimate. You can find the detailed breakdown in the annex of the TAF manual. This is from my site now. Thank you. Thank you, Andre. Thank you, Andre, for this. Um, we have um, a few more questions. I think we still have some time for that. Uh, an interesting question is, what are the differences uh, in applying the TAF in water and sanitation versus hygiene? And I would like to ask that question to Paul, because in Uganda we had uh, hygiene in our um, field testing and I think he can answer that. So water and sanitation is indeed more concrete technology oriented where hygiene may be slightly different. Uh, Paul, can you answer that question please? Maybe Paul can't hear us. I think Paul cannot hear us, but I, I will try to answer the question. We tried to apply the TAF on the, the tippy tap. You may know that's the hand washing device, uh, generally known, I think. And I think uh, in principle, we tried to the hand -washing device. in principle, it is possible. The issue is that. Um, it's a, you have to adjust your questionnaire entirely because many of the generic questions that are there uh, in the water and sanitation questionnaires do not apply to such a relatively simple technology. 
but in principle it is possible to apply it also to to hygiene related technologies I would like to go to a next interesting question and I would like to address that uh, or like to have it answered by Vincent the question is how is financial sustainability included in the TAF so we have the the six dimensions and how is financial sustainability included in the TAF okay thanks Yao. Um, so as Yao mentioned and as Andre covered in his presentation the TAF has six indicator groups and the, the first one is social um, factors, but the second one is economic factors. And this, this economic indicator looks at users' willingness to pay, users' ability to pay, and it looks at whether the producer or provider of the technology um, has a business model that requires subsidy should users not be able to pay. Um, and then it also looks at where that subsidy might come from, like are there any supportive financial mechanisms, either government-led or, or led from any other um, area that might provide financial support, for example, umbrella organizations um, that might subsidize the service provided by that technology. So those different aspects, yeah, they're covered by the economic indicator. Um, the key element to success in using that indicator is to do preparatory work up front to try to establish what the capital maintenance costs are of the service, what the operational costs are, um, and the capital costs are obviously a bit easier to work out. But there's actually a tool produced by KNUST in Ghana that helps to actually arrive at some, some fairly accurate um, costs under those different categories, CAPEX, CAP, MANEX, and um, OPEX. Yeah, thanks. Thank you, Vinny. Um, I have another question for you, actually, and that is, what is the cost of TAF? And I know that you have been in contact with your water aid country officers to get that clear. So maybe you can give uh, an answer to this uh, question. The cost of TAF. Okay, certainly. Um, it varies depending on how remote the districts are where you're doing the assessments. A large portion of the cost of implementing the TAF is in fuel costs, vehicle costs. Um, so what we did was we looked at how the teams could be structured um, to, to make them most cost effective. Um, and the costs of implementing the TAF range between um, $3,000 and $5,000. Um, as I say, most of that's fuel transport, um, but also um, the salaries of those involved in doing the evaluation and um, allowances for participants in the um, assessments. The cost of doing it in Nicaragua, however, was remarkably cheaper than that. Um, it was supported, obviously, by um, World Tunga Life, the German NGO, and WaterAid Nicaragua, but the costs that they're reporting for those assessments were about $500, which um, I think is so low because everyone involved in the assessment was, was based locally in the community, including the WaterAid staff and the uh, other German NGO staff, as well as all the community members. Um, the only people that had to be bought from outside were the Ministry of Health, I think, and the National Wash Unit. But everyone else was there, hence the low cost. But when you look at the scale of these costs, they're nothing compared to the investments that go into the services themselves. So actually the cost is fairly insignificant, um, even if it's up to $5,000. Thank you, Vinny. Good, uh, good response. I have a question for Benedict. Um, it is, what will be done to ensure that the host will be able to provide the technical support to continue effectively uh, with the TAF uh, on a continuous basis? So how do 
we actually as supporters ensure that the hosts uh, will continue and what kind of technical support is needed from them or from outside. Benedict. Um, yeah, we at the moment we are working, I, when I say we, the work test team is working closely we are working with I, when I say we the host team. institutions With the host institutions already on the technologies that are presented to them for uh, validation. And we are going to do that with them even up to, I mean, beyond the project period as part of giving them the training or the skill of facilitation. And we have also, we also make ourselves available any time that we have to share on certain platforms uh, to throw further light on that. We are going to constantly also link up with the website to provide updates and information on what is happening in Ghana. So we hope that through that the, uh, the enthusiasm will be generated and the continuous use will be sustained within the Ghanaian sector. Thank you, you. Thank you. Thank you, Benedict. Uh, we have uh, many more questions, actually, um, but we don't have the time left to answer them. Uh, they are very interesting, and we will definitely answer them. Uh, see, please see our websites. I'm looking at Carmen, whether you will do something on the poll. I'm doing a, a quick poll before we have an introduction to the online resource base where all of the tools and publications are available. And Sean will uh, talk about that. So I just wanted to do a, a poll, what you know about Tip and Taff now. Um, how do you think you might be able to use either of the tools? The poll is now open. And in the meantime, we continue with uh, our presentations. Um, let me see. The, there is the WASTEC website www.washtechnologies.net, now hosted by the RWSN, and that is a, a key platform for sharing TAF and TIP information and more. May I invite Sean to introduce us this website? Sean? Great, thank you, Yo. Um, right, if you can, uh, the poll's gone, so I can now share my screen. Can you see? Can you see the presentation first of all? No, we can see your screen. Your desktop. Okay, right. Let me try. Uh, Big blue button on share my screen. Yes, we can. Can you see it now? Yeah, definitely. Great. Okay, so hello everyone and welcome to the introduction to the washtechnologies.net, the website for the TAF and the TIP. In the following slides I will show you some of the main features but not everything, so I encourage you to visit the website itself and explore it. So when you first arrive on the home page it uh, should look something like this and if I just click on the presentation the first thing you'll see is this short video prepared by Wartrade, which gives a really good overview of what the, the, the TAF is about. So I encourage you to watch that. Next, I would like to draw your attention to the four colored boxes. These are the main navigation buttons that will take you on the journey through the TAF and the TIP. And then at the top here, uh, is a menu bar to take you to some of the important areas of the website. And down the bottom here, these country outlines take you to the three WASHTEC pilot countries that we've been hearing from, where you can find out more about what has been done in Burkina Faso, Ghana, and Uganda. So let's start exploring. First of all, let's click on one, uh, the challenge. That takes you to this page, 
uh, where you have a short description of why the TAF and the TIP are needed and uh, what, the, what they're trying to achieve. And as you can see, the colour boxes have now moved to the right hand side. So let's click on the next box down, which is two, how to use the TAF and the TIP. So on this page, you'll find some short descriptions about what the TAF and the TIP uh, are and how to help you get uh, started. And uh, on the live website, you can scroll down and read more and find links to some of the manuals and reports. We're also putting some videos here on to help you use the website and get the most out of it. So now we'll go to tools, the third one. The strength of the TAF is its flexibility so that a wide range of wash technologies can be assessed. The main components of the TAF are the screening sheet and the main assessment sheets. These will be different for different technology types in different contexts. This web page is designed to help you find the right combination of TAF materials by asking you three simple questions. So the first question is, is the technology new or existing? where you want to apply it. At the moment, there's just the existing technology option, but this will be expanded soon. Question two, what scale is the technology suitable for? Again, there is only one option at the moment, but soon you'll be able to choose between household, community, or institutional level. So for example, assessing a rope pump as a household solution will be very different from uh, using it as a community pump. And question three, what type of wash technology are you assessing? And here there are currently four options available. There's a water supply general, water supply lifting, which is generally pumps, uh, sanitation general, and sanitation latrine. When you have uh, selected what's best for you, then you click on this uh, black button here, show documents. And then if you scroll down, you'll see all the documents that you need to uh, do the TAF assessment. You can then click on those to go to the download page for each. And the TAF questionnaires are available as both PDF and Word files. These include the manual that you'll need to do the assessment. So now you're ready to, to go ahead and do the TAF assessment. But what then? Well, that's what takes us to the last and perhaps the most exciting area, uh, which is number four, the sharing. So on the sharing page is a bulletin board where you can register to become a user of the website and then take part in the discussions. You can share your ideas and questions about the TAF and the TIP. To register, just click on the register button here and you'll be taken to a registration page where you can enter your details. And once these have been approved by a moderator, then you are ready to get going. The discussion board is just at the start though. If you click on the case studies menu uh, at the top, then you will be taken to a great part of the website where you can share the TAF results and see other organizations examples. So circled up at the top there. So that will take you to the case studies page here where a number of examples taken from the WashTech pilots. You can click on any of these uh, to be taken to the page for each case study to find out more about that particular TAF assessment and download any documents or reports about that assessment. You can also find the TAF case studies by using the map, just clicking the open map button circled here. This will take you to a world map and you can zoom into a country such as Uganda here and see where the TAF assessments have been done. If you click on any of these pins, then you'll see a bit of information about the case study. and You can click on it again and be taken to the page for that case study to find out even more. There's a lot more on the website, but the last area that I want to draw your attention to is the menu at the top of the screen, um, which is Wash Tech Reports, uh, which is circled in red there. This will take you to this screen where you can find all the Wash Tech project reports, the TAF and the TIP documents. If you are, um, you can click on any of a picture or title and to be taken to the download page for that document. So, in summary, washtechnologies.net uh, allows you to learn more about the TAF and TIP, what they are, what they can do for you and how to use them. 
to find the right TAF tools and templates for your project or assessment and it allows you to share your results and discuss your ideas and problems with other TAF and TIP users. So thank you very much for listening and I'll hand back for you to you for, uh, to round off today's session. Thank you. Thanks Sean for this clear introduction to the website. It will be the main source and means to communicate about the TAF and the TIP and its power for the wash sector. I'm looking at Carmen because during this webinar you had the opportunity to express your views and expectations on the TAF and the TIP. What value do you give already to the TAF and the TIP after this presentation? And let me ask Carmen about the results. Um. Well, as you can see, when I show the, the feedback from the poll, um, quite a few of the, the people who responded indicated that it seems like interesting tools for project design. Um, technology introduction, training and monitoring came in. Uh, unfortunately, we couldn't put another post which would have been other, and it would be interesting to hear feedback from people both on how you think it could be useful and what more you would need to to know uh, so that we could possibly try to follow up um, in even when the project is uh, is over um, we have a couple of questions that that weren't answered um, and I've gotten some feedback on that as well I think we we also need to keep to the to, to the time and make sure that we have enough time to answer them correctly. So I already indicated that we will be following up in a full report where we'll add the, question, the answers to questions that haven't been uh, answered right now. Thank you very much, Carmen, for this first uh, overview of the results of the poll. I think we, we heard uh, several presentations on country experiences in the project countries and beyond. Uh, what can we conclude now on the possible uses of the TAF and the TIP for the WASH sector? The potential use determines the interest of the sector, as we know, their buy-in. And the sector actors will ask definitely, what is in it for me? I think we can conclude that there are three main uses and the presentations gave them actually. Uh, first of all, as we saw from the Uganda experience and the Ghana experience, validation of a new wash technology for application in the country. So very much starting at the national level. Uh, technology developers who want to get their technology accepted, they approach the national level ministries which supply then the TAF and the TIP for validation of that proposed technology. That's one main use. The second one, and that is what we did particularly in the field testing, is the validation of an existing WASH technology for application in a specific context. For instance, at a district or a sub-district level with specific conditions. Then the TAF is applied before a technology has been introduced at that decentralized level. And the third main use is to use the TAF as a monitoring tool to assess why one technology is a success while another one is a failure. And Vincent Casey from WaterAid mentioned that very clearly to identify the barriers that exist for that specific wash technology uh, to make a contribution to a sustainable wash service. So in that monitoring, the hindrances and the success factors are determined that will lead to choosing either another technology for that context or formulating actions to do better. Okay, we have come to the end of this seminar. Please stay in touch to get the power of TAF and TIP. The websites shown here are the best links for all information and updates related to TAF and TIP. 
I'd like to thank you for your participation and hope this has been useful to you. I'd like to thank my WASHTAC colleagues for the contributions and support in this webinar and of course also the EU FP7 for their financial contribution. Have a good day. Bye-bye.